Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to find the variance and the standard deviation in the TI-84 graphing calculator. These formulas are programmed into your graphing calculator. Um, I just wanted to put them on here so you can understand the process that your calculator is doing. The standard deviation ones I have starred, those are the ones that your calculator is actually going to display for you first. So those will be what we find first and then we will square those values to get the variance. Just kind of understanding what your calculator is doing is important. It's taking all of your individual values, subtracting the mean, then it's squaring the differences. After it squares the difference, it's adding up that entire column and then dividing by the number in your population if you're doing population variance. And it's dividing by the sample um, minus one if you're dealing with the sample variance. Make sure that you do understand what the symbols are. Mu is always the population mean where X bar is the sample mean. They are actually calculated the same. You just have to know the difference between the formulas and when to use, or the symbols and when to use them. Okay, this is sigma, which is the Greek letter S, and then we have S for sample standard deviation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, this is already programmed in. I do have a video that shows you how to do hand calculations if you want to see how to do that, but that's not the importance of this video. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this data set and we're going to plug it into our calculator. So these are the values, the X values that the calculator is going to work with, and then it will subtract the mean from each of those, square the deviations, and divide by either N or N minus one, depending upon whether you are finding the variance for the population or the sample. The nice thing is, is you find them both on the same screen. The bad thing is, is you have to remember which one is which. So if you put the wrong one down, you will get the wrong answer in a homework platform. All right, so let's get started. Go ahead and grab your calculator. I have these numbers written down on a separate sheet of paper, so I will enter them along with you. Um, but these are the numbers that I'm going to be entering into my calculator. So grab your calculator and what you're going to do is hit the stat button and edit. And I'm going to enter all of my data in L1. If somebody borrowed your calculator or you accidentally deleted any of your lists, you can get it back really easily by hitting stat and option five, the setup editor and enter, and it will bring all of your lists back. So that's always important to know how to get them back. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go down my list and enter it in. I have 41, 38, 39, 45, 47, 42, 44, 41, 43, and 44. Okay, you do always want to make sure that you entered your data points in, so it's a good idea after you enter it, just to check your data set to make sure that all of your numbers match, because if you mistype something, then it will give you the wrong answer and you'll get frustrated. All right, so once you have your data in, you're gonna hit the stat button, and you're gonna arrow over to where it says calculate and choose option one, one var stats. If you have a TI-83 or an older TI-84, this screen may not show up for you. All you have to do if you used L1 is just hit enter afterwards and it will do the calculations for you. If you used a different list before hitting enter, just hit second and whatever list you're talking about. So if I had used L2, I would just do second and the number two. We used L1, so I just do second and the number one. So it's important to make sure you know where your information is stored and just hit calculate. On this screen, it does give you the sample mean, the sum of all your X values, the sum of all your um, X values squared, but the ones that we're interested in is S and Sigma. So S is our sample standard deviation and Sigma is our population standard deviation. So I'm gonna go ahead and write those down and we can see that our standard deviation for our population is approximately 2.615. And for our sample, it's approximately 2.757. So now remember that the relationship between the standard deviation and the variance is that to find the variance, we would just square this value. You do have to be very careful because if I square this value here, it's not gonna give me a very accurate answer. So it's better to use the variables that are stored in your calculator. So this entire string of numbers, you can either remember it and hit squared afterwards or you can use your calculator to help you find it easier. All of these variables are stored under the VARS button and then option five statistics. The sample standard deviation is option three. The population is option four. So you, we're going to find both of them, but just depending upon which one you're finding, if you're finding sample, you would use S sub X. And if you are using um, 
the population standard deviation, you would use sigma sub x. Notice it does give us s sub y and sigma sub y. That's if we're dealing with two variables that we're comparing, then we would use that for the second variable. So that's what the calculator does to denote the differences. So I'm going to choose option four. I'm just going to hit the number four and then the x squared button and enter, and it's automatically going to find the value for me. I'm going to go ahead and find the sample variance at the same time. That way we can just go and write both answers down on my screen. Okay, so I end up with 6.84 and 7.6. You will notice that the sample standard deviation is slightly larger than sigma, and that's because we're dividing by n minus 1 rather than just n. So instead of dividing by 9, uh, I'm sorry, dividing by 10, we're dividing by nine in the second one for the sample. So that's why there is a difference between the two. Like I said, you will get something different had I squared the 2.615. So instead of squaring, so instead of doing the sigma x and I just hit, I rounded it and then squared it, notice it does give me an, a less accurate answer. So it's always best to use the stored features in your calculator. So just to recap, what we did was stat, edit, enter your data in L1. After you enter your data stat, calculate option one, one var stats, okay? And then you are going to find S for the sample standard deviation, sigma for the population standard deviation. To square them, you would just go to vars in option five, which is your statistics menu. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.